Okay, now that we've reviewed a lot, let's actually look at 15 questions on the ACT test. On the English test, the questions don't tell you if they're punctuation questions or grammar questions or rhetorical questions with focus or writing elements. So you need to look at each question and try to determine the best that you can, what type of question is this and what's the right answer. You need to try to do this quickly because don't forget it's a time test. The punctuation questions are pretty easy to tell because the only real difference is the punctuation mark. The grammar questions will test you on which types of words, like for example, which verb tense should you use or is this an adverb or an adjective and the modifier. Some questions are about prepositional phrases and you'll always get a who or whom question in there somewhere. About half the tests are rhetorical questions and those will usually be near the ending of each passage. Each passage consists of 15 questions roughly. Remember the rhetorical questions are questioning, do I understand what good writing looks like? You're looking for what is the most focused, the most concise, and what is styled and organized the best. What I want you to do here, and this is important, is I want you to pause the video and look down in the video description. There's a link to a practice ACT test. Now this is a full practice test. But what we're going to be looking at are the first 15 questions of the English portion of the test. In case you get lost, that is passage one and it's called What Elephants Learn. I want you to time yourself for about 10 minutes. Try to do it even under that time. When you come back, we're going to go through each question, but I'm going to answer them quickly. So I want you to have already read and analyzed and done your best guess on each one of these 15 questions. So stop now. Click on the link below. Okay. Do not watch this video from here on out if you haven't done those 15 questions. When I look at question number one, I can tell right away this is a punctuation question. The only difference between each one of these options is where the comma or apostrophe is. Now from the get-go, I know it's not the apostrophe because in this sentence, the elephants don't own anything. So let's get rid of D right away and look at where the commas are. There's no reason in this sentence to have a comma after the word elephants. And when she started the project is a dependent phrase. So we should have a comma after 1972. The right answer here is C. Number two is a grammar question and I can tell right away this is asking between adverbs and adjectives. Remember an adjective describes a noun and an adverb describes a verb. Famous is an adjective. That is a famous dog. Famously is an adverb. I dance famously. What I'm describing here is the project. It's a noun, so I need an adjective. More than famous doesn't work because then is a time. It should be more than famous. So I know the right answer here is F, no change. Number three is another punctuation question. And this one tests us on commas, dashes, and colons. When I look at this complete sentence, I can see that a dash is already here. It says, an author, lecturer, filmmaker, and fierce advocate for elephants, which face a daunting array of threats to their survival from routes to human enroachment, Moss is widely considered an expert on the social behavior of these creatures. Whew, that's a long sentence. And part of the reason it's a long sentence is because there's an interruption in the sentence. And the interruption is started already with a dash which face a daunting array of threats to their survival from droughts to human enroachment. Now remember, I can use commas around interruptions, but this interruption already starts with a dash, which is setting this detail aside, and that means I would want to end it with a dash also. So the right answer number three is B, a dash. Number four, here's our first rhetorical question. At this point, the writer is considering adding the following true statement, humans are among the threats to the animal survival. And should the writer make this addition here? Two options say yes, and two options say no. In order to get this one right, I needed to have read that sentence before, the one we just talked about. We're keeping the portion that says, these elephants face a daunting array of threats to their survival from droughts to human enroachment. So when I look at the sentence, humans are among the threats to the animal survival, Personally, I realize that it already is mentioned this in the passage, right? And the best answer is J. No, don't add it because this information is already provided in the paragraph. Number five, here's another punctuation question. I see here the only difference is where's the comma? The noun is field studies. The adjective intensive field studies. There's no reason to have a comma in between intensive and field. There's no reason to have a comma between studies and is. On this one, the right answer is B. No comma at all. Don't be afraid to answer no punctuation. Number six, this is a rhetorical question. It's one of those transition questions. And remember, there are different types of transitions. I can tell this right away because my options are however, for instance, as always, and by now. Each one of them do different things. 
However, for example, is that opposing transition. So it's going to transition from one idea to the next idea that are opposite attitudes. For instance, is an example transition. I love you. For instance, I love when you do this. It's giving an example. As always and by now are both time transitions. So what I need to do here is look at the passage, what's before the transition and what's after the transition so I know what I'm transitioning to. And the information before the transition talks about how there's an extent to which elephant survival depends on learned behavior. And then what comes after the transition is a calf must learn how to use its trunk and give an example of how it does that. Now, I kind of gave that away because the transition is going from a point being made to an example of that point. And only one of these is an example transition. And that is G, for instance. Number seven, here's a grammar question that's focusing on verb tense. Notice there's already a verb in the sentence with the correct verb tense, and so we should match that same verb tense. The sentence is, at first a young elephant will drink by kneeling down at the water's edge and blank directly with its mouth. If you notice the young elephant will be kneeling, one verb tense, and it should have an ing on there. And sipping, C. Kneeling, sipping, they match. Number eight is a grammar question also, and if you look at this, it's pretty obvious to see that the period should not go here. The habit of pulling water into its trunk is not a complete sentence. No verb is happening here. And we actually want to add more to this noun. The habit of pulling water into its trunk and releasing that water into its mouth, and then the verb develops only when, et cetera, et cetera. So the right answer for number eight is G, and then. Nine and 10 both deal with prepositional phrases. Prepositional phrases help us understand what position something is in in comparison to something else. If we read the full sentence, it will say, the habit of pulling water into its trunk and then releasing that water into its mouth develops only after months of witnessing other elephants doing so. Whew, it's a long sentence and lots of questions have been put in this sentence which might make it difficult to read. But when we get all of the answers correct, you'll notice of witnessing is the best preposition for this. Question 10 is another grammar prepositional phrase. In which this regard, in this regard, ones that, which. So we need to read the full sentence to see which preposition makes the most sense. One of Moss's most memorable observations in which this regard involved, that's so wordy and unnecessary, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid, let's cut it out. So right answer, G, in this regard. Now 11, here's a style question. It's a rhetorical question, this question on style. Usually style questions give you a hint first, but this one doesn't. Now it's rhetorical because all of these are grammatically correct. But in this sentence, you'll notice it is already used as style and it wants you to repeat the same style. The sentence says, these were a matriarch, Echo, and two offspring, Enid, a 10-year-old female, and Eli, also named by Moss. It describes Enid as a 10-year-old female, so we want to describe Eli in the exact same way. The best answer here that matches a 10-year-old female with Enid for Eli is to say a baby male gives the gender and the age, just like it did with her. Right answer, B. 12, here's a grammar question that deals with verb tense. This sentence says, Eli not only overcame his early limitations, but he also grew up to be a confident young bull. Now notice, we have the verb overcame, that's past tense. We wanna match the verb overcame. Growing does not match it, and will have grown as future tense. The verb that matches overcame the best is he also grew. He overcame, he also grew. The right answer on 12 is F. The last three questions are rhetorical questions and they usually are near the end of the passage. 13 is interesting because it has this sentence, Eli was born with deformed feet. And it wants us to know what order should we put this information in to make this paragraph make the most sense. We definitely don't wanna tell our audience that Eli had deformed feet before we even introduce who Eli is. One major hint here is I wanna see when Eli is mentioned. Both B and C give you the information before Eli is even mentioned, so those are wrong. A puts the sentence at the very end of the paragraph and D puts it after sentence number four. So what I wanna do is I wanna look and see what makes the most sense. When I look at this entire paragraph, it talks about how the mom, Echo, teaches her daughter, Enid, to take care of Eli due to his early limitations. After we learn these elephants' names, and before we learn that Eli overcomes his limitations, we need to know what that limitation was. The best place to put this sentence is after sentence number four. This is the place where it makes the most sense. 14F, this is in part grammar, but this is also a KISS rule. Remember, the shortest answer is often correct, and when I look at the shortest answer, the word to just makes the most sense. Now we're gonna take a minute and talk about question number 15. This is a rhetorical question and it asks you to read the entire passage as a whole before you answer this question. 
know that there are five passages on the English portion of the test. And at the end of each passage, usually there's a question like this that requires you to read the entire passage. The 15th question almost always deals with what is the theme? What is the main idea? What is the purpose of this passage? And that's a rhetorical question. And that's what the 15th question does here. It asks us, what is the writer's goal? And if the writer's goal had been to focus on some aspects of animal behavior in the wild, does this essay accomplish the goal? It will usually give you two yeses and two noes. So if you read the entire passage, you'll notice it's about this scientist who's observing elephants in a national park. So the right answer here would be B, yes. It does focus on some aspect of animal behavior in the wild because the essay focuses on elephants in the savanna and some of the behaviors they display as studied by Moss. I feel like if you had time to read the entire passage, this is quite an easy question. So the trick is, do you have time for the 15th question? Okay, so there's our brief overview. So you feel more confident about the things you get right and try to learn why you got some things wrong. I suggest not just doing this practice test, but looking through the four other passages and practicing on your own. This wraps up my ACT English videos. I can make more videos about punctuation, prepositions, any other grammar elements. And if you want a video on anything specific, please put some comments below. Tell me what you wanna learn. Now don't forget to subscribe so you can get some information about the reading portion of the test, which we'll talk about next.